two disc, two disc volume set. <laughs> I talk good American. <laughs> three, four, uh, three, three, bleh. Bleh. as what I have to say. Bleh. Bleh. And welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, coming at you with my latest playlist video. Uh, yes, it's the end of another month. Time for another playlist video. Yes, these are the videos in which I just talk about the stuff that I've listened to over the past month. And that's all there is to it, really. Uh, yes, well, there is a little more to it uh, before I start the actual playlist. I like to talk about, uh, if anything, uh, other stuff that might be on my mind, uh, stuff in the world of music, uh, stuff relating to my YouTube channel, or just something in my own personal life uh, that might might have happened that I'd like, like to share with you. Uh, the only other real thing that I have to talk about today is a couple of music passings uh, from the last month that I like to I like to recognize those when they happen every month, and uh, the second of which actually will lead directly into my playlist because just by sheer, sheer coincidence, about a week and a half ago, I listened to uh, an album by this artist and. Just a few days ago, or a couple of days ago, unfortunately, he left us. Uh, so uh, the first one that uh, I wanted to mention, though, is a guy you may not recognize his name, but you have almost definitely heard his voice. His name was John Davis, and he was one of the two real singers whose vocals graced the songs on Millie Vanilli's one and only album, uh, the other singer being a gentleman named Brad Howell. Uh, yes, Davis was 66, and he passed away from COVID-19. Uh, now, you probably already know the story of Millie Vanilli by now. Uh, their debut album was a smash hit success. Uh, the songs were all over the charts and everything, but it was revealed a while into uh, the album's run that the two performers that everybody saw actually lip-synced all the songs and never sang a note on the album. Yes, the group won a Best New Artist Grammy that year, but of course it was eventually revoked. The, I believe the one and only time that a Grammy Award was ever revoked by the uh, Academy, or whatever they're called. So yes, uh, Godspeed John Davis, and unfortunately it's, it's uh, sad that you did not get all of the recognition that uh, you deserved, as well as your colleague Brad Howell for those amazing songs that pretty much defined part of the 90s. And the second passing of note this month, uh, as I just mentioned, it leads directly into my playlist, so we'll kind of get it started at the same time as I mention him, and you'll notice that we are doing the cassettes first in the playlist. It is singer-songwriter B.J. Thomas, and he actually had success in the country, pop, and Christian genres, all three. And uh, perhaps his most famous song was Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. Uh, I remember that song most recently uh, from it appearing in Spider-Man 2, the second Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie. Kind of a weird place for me to recognize it from, but anyway. Uh, he was also the first uh, artist to record Hooked on a Feeling, which was later made uh, more famous by a Swedish group called Blue Swede. And that was the one that uh, had the famous Uga Chaka refrain uh, during the chorus. So uh, that, that was a Blue Swedes version. But uh, yes, he had a bunch of great uh, hits. Uh, amongst them was Hey, Won't You Play Another Somebody Done Somebody Wrong Song, which has the distinction of being the song with the longest title to reach number one on the Billboard Hot 100. So congratulations, B.J. Thomas, for having that distinction in music history. So. Uh, Yes, uh, this uh, this only has eight tracks on it, and it does not have uh, Somebody Done Somebody Wrong song, but it does have uh, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, Hooked on a Feeling, and six other songs. This is only an eight-track uh, Best Of collection, but it's making me want to listen to him more. Uh, but yes, uh, incidentally, he was 78 years of age and passed away from lung, ca lung cancer. Uh, so yeah, and I think it was B.J. Thomas, I might be uh, mistaking him for somebody else, but at House of Records, in their $1 section, I believe it's uh, B.J. Thomas that they have a whole bunch of albums from like five or six of his albums. So I'm seriously thinking after listening to this of uh, going back there on my next opportunity will be this coming Friday to see uh, if they have any of those left. So well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of a shame that I'm not really paying much attention to him until he's gone. Uh, although, well, technically I didn't because I listened to this uh, last week, so about eight or nine days before he unfortunately passed away. And this was uh, yesterday, the, this, this past Saturday, uh, as I'm recording this, it was yesterday. So, uh, yeah, Godspeed, Mr. B.J. Thomas. And now going on with my playlist, uh, another cassette I listened to in the past month was a Best Of collection by Jim Reeves, a country artist. Uh, not not bad at all. Uh, I, I kind of like his voice. He has kind of a rich voice. Standout songs on this. Oh, Blue Canadian Rockies. That was a pretty good one. And uh, uh, Roses Are Red, My Love. That's that's a pretty popular song. I think that might have been a, a Great American Songbook standard, not a Jim Reeves original. But yes, uh, Scarlet Ribbons, that's another good one. Uh, There's a New Moon Over My Shoulder. 
another good song, but yeah. This next one actually has a local connection. He is an Oregon, uh, born and raised in Oregon. Tom Grant, he is a jazz artist, uh, jazz instrumental stuff, uh, a graduate of the University of Oregon. So yes, he was kind of born and raised here in my my adoptive home state of Oregon. So yeah, not quite as upbeat as the jazz that I usually like, but still uh, pretty enjoyable. This was one of two Tom Grant tapes that was in uh, Sue's collection that I've listened to both of them this past month. and. Uh, pretty good. I will hang on to them. I'm not sure how, you know, how often I will listen to them, and I don't know if I'll be tempted to seek out any more of his stuff, but uh, a totally decent artist. And then we have a pianist named Richard Kleiderman. It's either Kleiderman or Kleiderman. Something in my brain tells me it might be pronounced Kleiderman. I don't know. But this is a, a classic, well, half classical, half easy listening compilation of his stuff. Uh, he is a pianist, I think I mentioned. And yes, uh, side A is filled with classical pieces. And side B is uh, easy listening stuff, popular songs, that kind of stuff. Uh, he does a rendition of Over the Rainbow, uh, Evergreen, uh, the theme from Hill Street Blues, which is kind of an inter interesting uh, selection. And yes, a bunch of classical pieces on side A. So he's very talented uh, pianist, a uh, very wonderful talent. I'm not sure if he's still around. But uh, this next artist, I actually do have um, other recordings, or at least one other best of compilation. So this tape is kind of redundant, but I think I'm still going to keep it just because because I have the room for it, for one thing. And also, I never know when I, when I will want to pop in a cassette of The Ventures. They are a uh, an instrumental group that uh, uh, specialized in like the surf rock sound from the 60s. Very, very talented bunch of musicians. Uh, they recorded for years and years and years, decades actually. And uh, this is a uh, collection of their best stuff from uh, the RCA label. So yeah, a bunch of great stuff. Walk Don't Run is one of their biggest hits. Uh, they do a rendition of Tequila, although, as I recall, when I listened to this, the uh, vocalist pronounced it Taquila. That's not how you pronounce it. I'm a stickler for those kind of things. Okay, I will admit, I, I'm a bit, a bit anal about uh, pronunciation. The Leonard Cohen song, Hallelujah. People bug me. Some people bug me when they sing that. I can get into that later, but anyway. Ram Bunk Shush was another song. I had never heard that one before, and that one's on here. Uh, they, do, they do a rendition of the theme from Hawaii Five-0. And uh, Telstar, which is another uh, classic uh, song. A lot of different groups have done that one. And Wipeout, which was a song by the, the Surfaris. They originally did that one. And then this was the Ventures instrumental version. So, yeah. a bunch of good, uh, nice, uh, enjoyable stuff on cassettes this month. And now I like to shake up the order of genres that I talk about in these playlist videos every month, so I'm not sure what order I did them in uh, last month, but I'm going to go with the LPs as my second grouping here. Uh, so forgive me if I repeated myself. I guess that's uh, all I can say. First off, uh, continuing with the theme of the 60s that uh, we had going with the Ventures there, and artists that begin with the letter V, the Vogues. Uh, this was a vocal pop group that was popular in the uh, 60s. Possibly they bled into the late 50s. But uh, if you ever watched the sitcom The Drew Carey Show, and this that was another sh uh, show that had a, a real penchant for music, I guess you'd say, because nearly every season they changed up, completely changed up, the opening title theme that they did for the show. And for at least one season, they used the Vogue song Five O'Clock World as their theme song. That's where, uh, that's how the Vogues came to my attention, because I have the soundtrack album from the Drew Carey Show. It's a fantastic album, by the way. But yes, that was, I, th I think that was the Vogue's most famous song, was Five O'Clock World. I'm not sure if this is their debut album, or if it's a compilation. I'm not sure. But yeah, a bunch of a bunch of great songs on here, and every song on there kind of captures that fun '60s spirit that uh, Five O'clock World does. They almost border on doo wop with their sound, kind of a combination of doo wop and brill building, I guess you'd say. So yeah, that it's, it's they're very 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 fun, very '60s pop. And then we have a, a much more well known group, Led Zeppelin. This is their uh, untitled fourth album. Yes, fourth album. Sorry. Uh, and yes, this has uh, some of the big big hits on it. Uh, uh, Black Dog and Rock and Roll start off this album. Stairway to Heaven is also on it, so yes. This is one of the must-have uh, Led Zeppelin albums, as are pretty much all of them. Yes, I, I never thought I would get so much into Zeppelin, uh, you know, album by album, but this is actually the fourth Led Zeppelin album I've owned, and I've been picking them up very steadily. I've been enjoying every single one of them. I have two, three, four, and uh, Houses of the Holy so far. I still need to pick up their debut album. I hear that's fantastic. So yeah, color me surprised. I, I, I've i also been trying to get into Pink Floyd, but I haven't been quite able to get as much into Floyd as I have Zeppelin, but yeah. 
this, there's a very good reason why they are one of the most uh, successful and most popular rock groups of all time. And then we have a band from the 80s. Well, the album is from the 80s. The band started in the, in the 70s. Heart. This is their self-titled album from 85, I believe. I can't see the copyright date, so I'll just say 85. Uh, but yes, this has this was probably their most commercially successful one. This had uh, What About Love, Never, and These Dreams, three of their biggest hits, all back-to-back -back on side one of this album. Great album. Uh, Heart Purists will, of course, uh, swear by their, their 70s harder rocking sound. This one took them in a more power ballad direction, which a lot of, you know, the, the, the long-time Heart fans were not totally okay with, but... Uh, for us kids who grew up in the 80s and started out with pop music, that's kind of the, the, the most memorable or the most go-to album, I guess you'd say. So, uh, but yeah, very, very good album. And continuing with uh, 80s albums and uh, prominent females in those groups, The Go-Go's. Uh, this was their debut album, Beauty and the Beat. Fantastic. If, if you are at all familiar with 80s music, you have heard a couple of songs on this album. We Got the Beat was the opening song. It's fantastic as well as Our Lips Are Sealed, two of the band's biggest hits from this album. This is a fantastic, great album. If you like girl groups, and, and if you like 80s music in general, if you have not heard this album, put it on and uh, you will not be dis disappointed. It's fantastic stuff. And then uh, the last LP I have for today is in a, a bit of a different direction. It's something that even as short, shortly as a few months ago, I never imagined I would get into or, or purchase uh, this album, at least, and certainly not on vinyl from these guys, but uh, a couple of fellow YouTubers have uh, touted its positive points in recent videos, and so I decided I might as well get it. Plus, when I looked at the track listing, pretty much all of their best songs, or best known songs, came from this album, their debut album, Appetite for Destruct Destruction by Guns N' Roses. Late 80s, I think. But yeah, um, you couldn't escape their songs on the radio back then. And yeah, some uh, great songs, Welcome to the Jungle, is one of their best ones. Paradise City is another fantastic one. Sweet Child of Mine was one of the best songs out of that entire decade, but yeah. I have absolutely no regrets picking up this album on vinyl. It's fantastic. Good pressing, good quality sound. So yeah, I don't think I don't think I'll dig any deeper with Guns N' Roses because, you know, the hair metal thing was not quite my thing. And as I said, all of the songs that I care most about are on this album, but uh, still very, very, very fun album to listen to. Excellent stuff. And now on to the CDs in this month's playlist, starting off with Pete Seeger. Yes, a, a seminal artist from the 60s folk scene. This is the scene that Bob Dylan started out in and many other artists. You almost can't talk about the 60s folk scene without talking about Pete Seeger. Uh, some great stuff. This is the two-disc edition, by the way. There's also a one-disc edition of The Essential Pete Seeger out there somewhere. And yes, so many uh, classic American folk songs that he covers on here. Uh, if I Had a Hammer, and uh, Turn, Turn, Turn to Everything There's a Season, uh, We Shall Overcome, the Civil Rights Anthem, classic, it can't miss, and uh, a lot of the songs on this album are maybe not as directly topical now as they were back in the 60s, but there just seems to be a need for folk songs and, and you know, social justice folk songs right now, and so listening to Pete Seeger kind of, kind of feeds your soul. I guess is the best way to put, to listen to music like this. And he also does a rendition of Joni Mitchell's song, Both Sides Now. Everything he, he does is just great. And there's also a song on here called Little Boxes. And I had never heard, and I don't know if it's a Seeger original or if somebody else wrote it, but it is a great song. It's like, if you listen to one Pete Seeger song, listen to Little Boxes and listen to the words. It's got a great message in it. So yes, that is a highly recommended song. And the, the version on here is actually a live version. So the, the, the crowd's uh, reaction or interaction makes it a little bit more enjoyable, I think. So yes, good stuff. Check out Pete Seeger if you haven't yet. Three out of these next uh, four were in my, uh, my mother's collection that I un unboxed a month or so ago. Uh, this one is Unforgettable, uh, songs from the Great American Songbook done by uh, the Boston Pops Orchestra under the baton of John Williams, one of my huge uh, biggest uh, appreciations in the music world is John Williams. His film scores are fantastic, but yes, a lot of great songs on here. Uh, the title track, which was uh, made famous by Nat King Cole, uh, Stardust, The Smoke It's In Your Eyes, Evergreen, Moonlight Serenade, Sophisticated Lady, Satin Doll, The Way We Were, My Funny Valentine, the list goes on. Um, 
17 great, great songs on here. Fantastic renditions, greatly orchestrated by the Boston Pops. Wonderful stuff. And then we have a duets album by Barbara Streisand. Uh, you saw me talk about this one as uh, you know, in unboxing my mother's CD collection, as I said. But yes, an all-star list of duet partners on here. Michael Buble, Stevie Wonder, John Mayer, Billy Joel, Blake Shelton, Lionel Richie. Uh, the song she does with Billy Joel is his song, New York State of Mind. And uh, with Michael Buble, she performs It Had to Be You. And What Kind of Fool she does with John Legend. I mean, every song on here is just fantastic. It's wonderful. Even if you're not a Streisand fan, if you just like music in general, I would suggest picking this album up. It's just wonderful, wonderful stuff. And then uh, one of three, no, four albums by Susan Boyle that I got in my mother's CD collection. This is her second album, I think. Uh, Someone to Watch Over Me. Some people, Susan Boyle is not for everybody, I will admit, but she has a gorgeous, gorgeous voice. What I like about her is that it comes down to what music is all about, the voice. Not what somebody looks like, not the, the, the flashings and the, the uh, trappings and stuff that make her, what am I trying to say, her image come out. It's all about the voice and the songs. And she has got the voice. That's one reason why that viral video of her on America's or uh, Britain's Got Talent made such a splash. I mean, she's just got a gorgeous voice. And this album is just fantastic. The title track is wonderful. Uh, someone to watch over me. Uh, she also does a, a rendition of Unchained Melody. That's another fantastic one. And uh, Autumn Leaves, that's a, a uh, Great American Songbook standard. And I just mentioned Joni Mitchell a minute ago. A minute ago. Uh, she does a rendition of Both Sides Now, a Joni Mitchell song. And uh, Mad World, a Tears for Fear song. And she also does you know, a couple of uh, modern or recent pop, st pop hits. And Enjoy the Silence. And I cannot remember who did that one. I'm, I'm going to say Erasure, but that's probably the wrong artist. But uh, yeah, she, she, she does just a bunch of great, great songs on this album. It's just as good as um, all of her other albums. I haven't found a bad Susan Boyle album yet. So yes, wonderful artist, uh, very talented. And yeah, she kind of deserved the career that she got after hiding in obscurity until she was, what, four, in her 40s? So yeah. And the final CD, the final album on this month's playlist is Soul by Seal. This is an album of soul and R&B covers from, I think, ranging from the 60s through the 90s or 2000s. Uh, he does a, a cover of Stand By Me by Benny King, uh, People Get Ready by Marvin Gaye, and uh, It's a Man's 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 World by James Brown, I Can't Stand the Rain, uh, Here I Am, Come and Take Me, It's All Right, uh, If You Don't Know Be My Now, and Knock on Wood by... Okay, I can't remember who that was by, but uh, yes... And a huge a list of not necessarily who's who, but what's what in the world of soul, uh, classic soul songs. And yes, Seal is kind of like an unmistakable voice. He just does a fantastic job on every single one of these songs. One of his must-have albums. I'm not a huge Seal fan, but uh, this is actually making me consider picking up his other other albums. I mean, I've, I've heard the hits, obviously, from the 80s and 90s that like everybody has, but uh, yes, this one just might uh, convince me to dig a little deeper in Soul in uh, Seal's discography. And so that'll do it for my playlist for the month of May 2021. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.